SW Art and Design Safety Darkroom Induction. Today we'll be looking specifically at the safety aspects of the dark, using the darkroom. Uh, we looked at what risks are involved in the specific tasks and processes around the darkroom and from that we determine the safe working procedures. Both these documents are available online. This is a safety induction only. It specifically relates to the safety issues related to performing the task of making a black and white print. This is an experience that we assume you already have. Any person using these facilities must have been inducted. The induction is recorded against your name on our online booking system. If you have not completed the induction, you will be refused entry. The biggest risk in this environment is that we work under low light conditions. That's so we're not fogging our photographic paper. We're working with a light sensitive material. Um, but that low light can lead to um, tripping or falls or other incidents. Within this facility, we also provide the material safety data sheets, which are available outside the room. Uh, these material safety data sheets include all the information about the properties of the compounds of the chemicals that we're using here at college. If you have any concerns, you can get copies of the information from the Resource Centre. Some people will develop a sensitisation to the chemicals, which may develop in a, a rash or an itch. So we recommend that you get a copy of the information, take it to your doctor and seek professional advice. Any introduced chemical or substance uh, that you bring on to college must be cleared with the area supervisor first. If you have a process or a task that you'd like to perform that we don't cater to, um, please discuss it. We would require the MSDS safety sheets uh, to determine what the compounds and properties of that chemical or process were. Um, then we could either approve it um, or determine an alternative for you. When arriving at the darkroom, make sure that all your personal belongings and bags go into the bookshelf. Due to the low light conditions in the room, it's easy for anybody to trip over anything that's on the floor, so we need to keep everything off the floor. When working in the darkroom, the first tool or machine that you will use is the enlarger. The enlarger is connected to the power, so it's electricity, and remember, you don't want to mix water and electricity, so try and make sure your hands are dry. The benches should always remain dry. When using the enlarger, um, you can turn the enlarger on to focus so that you can arrange your image, your composition, see what you're doing, but don't leave them on for any extended period of time because they will become extremely hot and that heat starts to make the wiring brittle and could lead to, to uh, failure of the particular equipment. So make sure you're turning it off when you've done your composition and when you're ready to make your exposure, press the prescribed time button and that will give you the exposure that you require. Also, when working with the enlargers, you're often using glass to make proof sheets. Um, we have bound the glass with tape to keep the edges soft and not sharp and hopefully if you do happen to drop it or break it in any way, the tape helps to keep the glass together. But if you have any breakages or issues, just advise the Resource Centre and they will assist you. We also ask that when using the enlargers, when the enlarger is on, that you do not open the top entry. Uh, this is where the filter, the contrast filters go in, in this tray. Um, but in doing this, you are flooding the darkroom with light and typically people will panic and that could lead to an issue. So make sure your enlarger is off before opening to access the filter drawer. Now that you've made your print, it's time to take the print over to the chemical area to process it. When doing the photographic process for, for processing prints in open trays, we must use the safety spectacles so that we don't get any splashes in the eyes. Also, never put your hands into the chemicals. Always use the tongs to retrieve your prints or move them from one bath to the other. The chemicals we're using here in the photographic print area is the Dectol Developer, which is a strong alkaline solution. We have a stop bath, which is a weak acid solution. And we have the fixer, which is the ammonium thiosulfate solution. 
Also be aware that when you're using the tongs that you're, you're not flicking chemistry, uh, particularly to someone who might be on the other side of the sink. Um, in retrieving your test strips or prints, um, just be aware that chemistry is not ending up on somebody else or yourself uh, or in your eyes or on your clothing. Always using the tongs. By mixing the tongs, you'll end up getting contamination on your print. Due to the type of task that is involved with the open chemical trays, we're unable to allow students to use this type of process after hours. Once your print is completely washed, bring it over to the dryer, remove the print from the tray, and place your print emulsion up into the dryer. The dryer will take it up, take it through the system, and dry it completely, and it'll come out the other end. There's no need to change the dials. We've set the, the dials to give you the optimum drying and speed time for the print. Remember to turn the print dryer to run down when you've finished printing. Um, that will allow the dryer to cool enough to turn off. If you have any issues with the dryer at all, smell any smoke or burning, um, notify the resource centre immediately. They'll come and assist you. Also remember that your test strips need to be a minimum size. Here at UNSW Art and Design, we also have the option to use the black and white print processor. Because the chemicals are completely contained within the machine, we don't have the requirement to wear splash spectacles. Um, it's also a process that you can do after hours access if you're eligible. To use the machine, once you've exposed your paper, place the paper emulsion down as opposed to the backing to the machine. Insert, the machine takes the paper up automatically and carries the paper through the developer, fixer and wash. Comes out the dryer, so it's a dry to dry process, um, allowing for ease of use and minimum exposure to chemicals. We also require that you use test strips that are at least as big as we indicate here, otherwise we will have issues with the machine jamming. If you do encounter an issue where you've got some chemicals in your eyes, move immediately to the chemical eye wash, push on the paddle, and immerse your eyes into the stream of water to get rid of all that chemistry. You want to get all that chemistry out of your eyes as soon as possible. Um, ask for help from the resource centre, they will assist you, but we would also recommend that you see a, a doctor or a professional to seek professional advice. If you find that you've spilt chemicals down your clothes or you're uh, saturated with chemicals, move straight to the shower, stand beneath the shower and pull the lever. This will shower you with water, diluting that chemistry as quickly as possible. Should you experience a major chemical spill, come straight to the chemical spill kit. Within the kit, there are gloves and a barrier man suit so that you're protected. Uh, put the gloves on and barrier man suit if required. Immediately deploy the booms. The booms are to stop the chemical from traveling to the drain because we don't want that chemical going down the drain and into the waterway system. Surround the chemical with the boom. Embracing it, em embodying the, the chemical. And then use the wadding to soak the chemistry up. Immerse the wadding in. Then go to the resource center and seek help. They will assist you. The important thing is to try and trap that chemistry to stop it from going down the drain, but doing it safely while you're protected with gloves and barrier man suit.